Up to this point, you've been running Bullseye on the simulator. That's great and all, but it's probably not why you're watching this course, right? You want to make real apps that run on your real iPhone. In my opinion, one of the coolest things about iPhone development is being able to make your own app and then carry it around in your pocket to show off to your family and friends. Don't get me wrong, testing your app in the simulator is really important. When I'm developing an app, I usually develop most of the time in the simulator and only test it on a real device from time to time. However, testing on a device is incredibly important. There are certain things that will only work on your device and won't work in the simulator. And also, you can only accurately test the performance of the device on an actual device. Until recently, you needed a paid developer account to run apps on your own device. That's no longer the case anymore. You can do it just with the free Apple ID. And the latest version of Xcode makes it easier to deploy to your device than ever before. Let's try it out. The first step is to connect your iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad to your Mac using a USB cable. Now, I've already done this, and I'm actually showing you a video from my iPhone right here. So what you're seeing right here is my iPhone. This is me swiping between different screens. And what I want to do is I want to get the app on here. Once your phone is connected, you want to go to Window, Devices, and Simulators. And you should see, hopefully, your phone here. Now, if this is the first time that you're using your device with Xcode, this window will say something like, your iPhone isn't paired with your computer. And so you have to unlock your device first. And then after unlocking, it'll ask you to trust the computer you're trying to connect to. And so you have to type trust to continue. Once that all finishes, it'll refresh and it'll show something like this, where it shows a little bit of information about the device. The next step is to set up Xcode with your Apple ID. Now it's okay to use the same Apple ID you're already using with iTunes and iPhone, but if you run a business, you might wanna use a new Apple ID to keep things separate. Of course, if you've already registered for a paid developer program account, you should definitely use that Apple ID. Create an Apple ID if you don't have one already, and then go to Xcode Preferences, and go to Accounts. And what you wanna do is click the plus button right here, and walk through the process of signing up with an Apple ID. You have to enter in your username and your password. And I've already done this, and once you do, you see something like this, uh, where it's connected to your screen. Once you log in with your username and password, you should see something like this. Now, if you get any problems or have any issues with your Apple ID, one of the quickest solutions is to you know, just make a new Apple ID. It's really easy, it only takes a few minutes. Just go to appleid.apple.com and click the Create Your Apple ID button down here. Okay, once you've created your Apple ID and you've configured an Xcode, all you have to do is go to your project here and go to General, and there's a Signing tab. And what you want to do is you want to create your personal team option right here in Xcode. And what that'll do is it'll automatically do a lot of things to set up your Apple ID. Now, you may get the error right here. It says, failed to create provisioning profile. The app ID com.raiseware.bullseye cannot be registered to your development team. Change your bundle identifier to unique string and try again. What that's saying right here is every app user needs a unique ID right here, which is set by default in this project to com.raiseware.bullseye. But actually while developing this course, I've already taken that. So you need to create this to be something unique to you. In this case, you might want to put your name like right here. So I'm going to put com Ray Wenderlich, or you could also put like a unique number at the end, like 9,000. Then I'm going to try again here. And now it's created a, what's called a signing certificate for this for me. So I can actually run this on my device. Now there's one last thing, it's just to actually run it on your device. So up here, you should see a drop down now for your device. So you can select that and then just click the run button. Now you may also see an error like this. The run destination is not valid for running the scheme bullseye. And what this is saying is my phone is actually running iOS 10.3 but currently this project is set up to require iOS 11 to be installed on this device. And in the case of Bullseye, we're not actually using any APIs that are specific to iOS 11, so it would run on iOS 10 just fine. We just have to tell Xcode that that's okay. And to do that, we just go over to Build Settings, and we scroll down to Deployment, and there's a setting here called iOS Deployment Target, and we just change this to whatever version is supported. So I'm gonna choose iOS 10 in this case, and then let me try again. If you get a pop-up that says code sign wants to access the key in the keychain, just say always allow. If your phone is locked, you may have to unlock your device. Now you may also get an error that says this, could not launch bullseye, verify that the developer app certificate is trusted. So just follow the instructions here. So I'll go to settings, general, profiles and device management, developer app, and click trust. Okay, and then I'm gonna try again and check it out. There's my app. So this is me on my phone, dragging the slider as close as I can to 71, tap hit me, almost had it. And I can go back to my home screen and let me go over to the side. 
And there we go. I see the Bullseye app listed right there. Awesome. I've got it that I can carry around in my pocket.